My name is Frankie Hewitt. I'm the producer here at Ford's Theater and of this show on Shiloh Hill. Tonight I have the very happy task of thanking those who make Ford's Theater's programs possible. We have so many friends that I obviously cannot single out every one, but there are several who deserve special recognition. First, Mr. President, I must say a special thanks to you for sending Bill Clark over to Interior. He barely had a chance to settle in there before we got him over here to check out our chairs. And in spite of those chairs, he has become a good friend. Secretary Clark graciously served as chairman of tonight's gala. And as you can see by the overwhelming turnout, he has had the enthusiastic support of our Board of Governors and our Board of Trustees. Mr. Secretary, I think you will be pleased to know that the social events and the souvenir program have all been completely underwritten and that Ford's Theater will net almost $300,000 from tonight's gala. We have three gentlemen to thank for the underwriting and several other friends whom I also want to thank. As I introduce each of you, please stand so that we can show our appreciation. The American Medical Association made the souvenir program possible, and the AMA is represented tonight by Mr. William Hotchkiss. Mr. Hotchkiss, wherever you are. Please thank all of your members for us. Don Crabe, Chairman and Chief Executive Officer of the Allstate Insurance Group, is one of our very special guests, Millie O'Neill. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Donald Crabe. <laughs> Those of us who are lucky enough to call Arm and Hammer friend, and sometimes a few surprises. We felt fortunate when he agreed to host our gala supper dance tonight, but you can imagine my delight when I got a call with his generous offer to have his film company, Arm & Hammer Productions, produce a television special on Ford's, which he will then give to Ford's Theater. <laughs> Dr. Hammer. Tonight's show on Shiloh Hill is an company. The gentleman primarily responsible for that first grant, which set us on the road to tonight, was Mr. Robert Dunlop, and he is with us tonight. Mr. Dunlop. Thank you. There is no organization in the Washington area which can match the consistent generosity of the Morris and Gwendolyn Kayfords Foundation.
A Ford's theater event would not be complete without a has been the person most responsible for stimulating Sun's interest in Ford's. Unhappily for us, Clyde retired as Sun's Washington representative last month. Major role in raising more than $750,000 for Ford's theater over the past 10 years. And yet absolutely the only favor he has ever asked is that he be seated on the right aisle. So now sitting. They are yours whenever you want them. Ladies and gentlemen, my good friend Clyde Wheeler. Now I would like to ask the cast to join me on stage. About eight years ago, a handsome young balladeer named Bill Shustick came to me with the idea of doing a musical which would use the actual music from the Civil War period. It was his dream, and so he never really let me forget it. We made a few false starts, but finally this year we decided to just take the plunge. On Shiloh Hill is the result of that collaborative effort. Bill Shustick is the heart and soul of this production. Bill, please take a bow. not be here tonight, however, if it were not for the dedication of three really wonderful women. Seven years ago, when she had just moved down to Washington, Millie O'Neill innocently came into Ford's Theater one night. We talked her into serving on the Board of Trustees. Then we made her chairman of our first big fundraising gala, and she's played a pivotal role in our fortunes ever since. Millie was joined four years ago by Joy Baker, who also became a trustee and immediately went to work as the chairman of our 1981 gala. That was the year that Nancy Reagan came to town. And so when Millie and Joy made her an offer that she couldn't refuse, Mrs. Reagan became our honorary gala chairman. Since that time, she and her staff have been absolutely fantastic in helping us with these annual events. Mrs. Reagan, Mrs. O'Neill, Mrs. Baker, no words can adequately express our gratitude for your help. Before I ask you to come up and join me on stage, I would like to point out to the front row that the cushions you're sitting on are not the same as those in the rest of the theater. <laughs> We're doing our best to increase the comfort factor, or maybe I should say to decrease the discomfort factor. So you are serving as sort of a test market tonight. And if you leave smiling, then the Park Service will go ahead and fit all the chairs with new cushions. Now, may I ask you, Mr. President, Mrs. Reagan, Speaker, Mrs. O'Neill, Senator, and Mrs. Baker, Secretary, Mrs. Clark, please come up and join us on stage. Nancy and I are honored to be here tonight, and I know I speak for several, everyone in the audience when I thank Bill Schustick, the playwright, for the play and the entire cast on Shiloh Hill, of oh, Shiloh Hill, for that magnificent performance. Ford's Theater opened in 1863. 
I wasn't here at that performance. But, <laughs> but it was a year when most Americans were farmers and people still sang folk songs like Shoe Fly. The street outside was a dirt road and America was locked in a civil war that ravaged thousands of acres and tens of thousands of lives. In one titanic struggle that gave tonight's play its name, the Battle of Shiloh, more than 20,000 soldiers were cut down. Few burdens can compare with the, those that were borne by the men and women who lived in this city during those bitter years. And yet even then, Washingtonians could gather at Ford's Theater as we've gathered tonight to see the latest play, to enjoy relief from the troubles of the day. Congressmen, senators, Mr. Lincoln himself found their duties easier because they could seek an evening of entertainment at Ford's. This theater demonstrated during the years that whatever events demand the nation's attention, the arts must always have their place. Today, Ford Theater is still giving Americans uplift and inspiration, and in keeping Ford's active, vibrant institution, all that of you testify to the importance of remembering our own history and witness the central place of the arts in our lives and set a fine example of the kind of private support that we have given in this country to such rich, given us such a rich cultural life. The hundreds of people deserve thanks, as you were told, but as executive producer of Ford's Frankie Hewitt, of course, played the central role in making possible this wonderful evening and every evening in this theater. <laughs> then there are the Board of Governors, the sponsors, the patrons, and the contributors. But tonight does belong to one woman who has given of herself to Fords, to the city, and to everyone fortunate enough to know her, Mildred O'Neill. Mildred. <laughs> now, Mildred, you may have suspected now and then that from time to time your husband and I find something about which we disagree. <laughs> but there is one thing that we sure agree on. He's lucky mighty lucky to be the man in your life. <laughs> on behalf of everybody with whom you work, your work for this grand old theater, it's meant so much, Millie, that we all thank you from the bottom of our hearts. And now, the lady, the man whose life I'm lucky to be in has a word to say. Nancy? Thank you, Mr. President. <laughs> <laughs> it's always a special pleasure to be in Ford's Theater, and tonight I feel doubly honored to have the privilege of giving a unique award to a wonderful lady. Millie O'Neill, as most of us know, moved to Washington permanently when her husband was elected as Speaker of the House. Ford's Theater was the first organization she became involved with in our nation's capital, and seven years later, she's been unanimously chosen to receive the Lincoln Medal for her generous support of the theater. It would be impossible to tell you everything that Millie has done for Ford's, but I do want to make special mention of her help in raising almost $4 million for the theater over the last five years. <laughs> On behalf of the Board of Trustees of Ford's Theater and everyone who, pl uh, who applauds the live theater program at Ford's, I'm honored to present the Lincoln Medal to Mrs. Thomas P. O'Neill, Jr.
Thank you, Nancy, very much, Mr. President. I want to thank you so much for sharing your very precious time with Ford's Theatre to make our galas so successful. Thank you. Mr. Speaker, thank you. <laughs> I'm delighted to receive this award and be included in the very prestigious group who have been honorees before me. I am just delighted, but I have said many times before that anything that I have done for Ford's Theatre has been a labor of love. I've enjoyed every minute of it. There aren't enough medals around for everyone that should be awarded. I would like to share this and, and accept it in the name of all the very wonderful men and women who have performed here at the galas, and also to the wonderful friends of Ford's who have so, been so very generous and gracious when I came begging, and I came begging very often. I thank you all, and I'm truly very gratefully yours. Thank you. <laughs>